So I was actually trying to find a really cool example of the concept of counter-Earth. The idea that's very common in science fiction for the existence of another planet on the opposite side of the Sun. But turns out that this is a big cliché. It's been used in a lot of different science fiction movies, science fiction stories, science fiction TV shows, and is basically one of those ideas that seems to come up very often because it does make for a pretty cool concept. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is basically because I wanted to start with this as the explanation for what's known as the Lagrange points. The five gravitational points created by the interaction between Earth and the Sun that essentially form locations where you can technically place an object and it's going to orbit just fine. With the counter-Earth point being L3, L2 being the point where we have James Webb Space Telescope basically orbiting this invisible point created by Earth and the Sun, L1 being the opposite point located between Earth and the Sun, and L4, L5 representing two other really unusual points where we do actually often find objects in relatively permanent orbits, and we often refer to these objects as Trojans. Although technically it's Trojans and Greeks, and this is mostly based on the observations from Jupiter, which seems to contain millions, if not possibly even billions, of these objects. Thousands of big ones have already been discovered, and we do have a mission, a NASA's Lucy mission that was launched approximately a year ago, this is 2023, so back in 2022, is on the way there to try to essentially explore them and to try to figure out what's really happening here. Okay, so Trojan points exist. Real clear, right? Alright, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be talking about a really exciting discovery from a pretty well-known exoplanetary system, what seems to be a Trojan planet. Basically a planet, or some kind of a planetary object, occupying the location that's already taken by another planet. In other words, imagine if this is Earth, it's like finding another planet either in L4 or L5 points, which is actually super exciting for another reason we're going to discuss near the end of the video. And so let's discuss what was discovered in this case and what all of this means, and of course, where all of this is located. And I guess, let's start with the location. So this is not too far, not too close. And it's a system that we've discussed many times before, because it became the first where scientists officially observed an exoplanet using a technique known as direct imaging. In other words, by looking here directly with a relatively large telescope, they were able to physically see a planet in orbit around the star. This is a system known as PDS-70. It sort of looks like this. It's around 370 light years away from planet Earth, and it's a relatively young star system, with the star slightly smaller than our Sun, but also very young, about 5.4 million years old. Our Sun is about 4.5 billion years old. And previous observations definitively discovered at least two major exoplanets, PDS-70b and C. Both of them were directly imaged by the Very Large Telescope from the European Southern Observatory. By the way, PDS here stands for Pico dos Dias. It's a name of a Brazilian observatory whose main goal back in the days was to discover pre-main sequence stars, or basically baby stars, in order to create a kind of a catalog and to then learn more about star formation, star evolution, and of course, baby stars. But in this case, this baby star is also forming baby gas giants, objects that will probably, at some point, become similar to Jupiter or Saturn. But the last time we've discussed this particular star system is actually because one of these planetary objects was discovered to potentially contain a moon-forming disk. Basically, it was also forming exomoons. Technically, this would make it the first exomoon visually confirmed to exist somewhere out there, even though this is a baby exomoon and a baby exoplanet. Still pretty exciting. But this time, by conducting additional observations, the researchers behind the study you can find in the description found evidence for something we've never seen before. A very tiny blob in the same orbit as one of the planets. The closer planet, PDS-70b. But more excitingly, it seems to be in the location where we expect one of the Lagrange points. Or basically this is some kind of a Trojan object in the orbit of this gas giant. But it's not really a very large object. Current estimates put its mass at maybe twice the mass of the moon, Earth's moon. So something like 4 to 5 percent the mass of planet Earth. Which is still definitely much more massive than anything in the orbit of Jupiter, and way bigger as well, but obviously not as big and not as massive as something we would expect from a planet in this star system. Here it's actually more comparable to some of the moons around Jupiter, both in terms of size and mass. Although to be more exact, here we don't really see the physical object as much as an accumulation of gas. It's actually visible right here, 
with the planet to the left side. And so there's definitely something in the orbit, and it's definitely something a lot less massive. But as you can see, none of this is developed, none of this is solid yet. And so in essence, this shows us how various star systems evolve, what happens in the beginning in the first few millions of years, and how certain objects can form in similar orbits. But this has a very important implication, or I guess ramification, for the theories behind the formation of Earth's moon. Because that's exactly how scientists today believe Earth's moon was created as well. Not by being created as a Trojan and being captured, but instead, another smaller planet that we refer to as Theia was created in one of the Trojan points around planet Earth, which then collided with early Earth, eventually producing the moon that you see on the right and modern Earth that you see on the left. And that's of course the best explanation we have right now for the existence of Earth and the moon and for why they are so similar and a lot of other properties as well. And so this discovery right here is almost exact evidence we needed to kind of explain that this does seem to be pretty common, and some planets that contain trojans that are maybe a little bit less stable can actually eventually collide, thus forming new objects, including new moons. And here it's important to add that L4 and L5 Lagrange points are not permanent positions. Depending on interactions with other bodies and depending on slight variations in orbital parameters, such as due to eccentricity, any trojan here eventually can lose its orbit and find itself somewhere else or even collide with the planet. And so this blob of gas that's going to become a planet sometime in the future might actually suffer a similar fate, either colliding with something or escaping this orbit and assuming an orbit somewhere else. That mission I mentioned previously, Lucy mission, is most likely going to provide more answers about Trojans once it arrives to its destination in the next few years. It's actually going to be visiting its first Trojans, Jupiter's L4 Trojans, sometimes in 2027, and then visiting L5 Trojans approximately four years later. Either way, at least for now, this is definitely the first ever Trojan planet ever discovered, or the first ever co-orbital planet seen anywhere in the entire universe. And that means that it definitely has to have a really cool name. As a matter of fact, modern astronomy doesn't even have a way to name these planets just yet. Like, would this be PDS-70B2, BB, B Junior? Yeah, no. Let's just give it a really cool name instead. Feel free to make suggestions in the comments below. But it's actually quite likely that many of these stars have these Trojan objects. It's just this is the first we've discovered so far. Even in the solar system, Trojans are pretty common around other objects as well. Now Jupiter has the most, Neptune has a few, but even our own planet has a couple of large rocks inside its L5 Lagrange points. We've discussed them previously, but this is definitely something that's pretty common everywhere. And so chances are a lot of other similar baby planets have these objects somewhere out there, it just we haven't really seen them yet, mostly because the telescopes were just not powerful enough yet. They are now though, so expect more discoveries, possibly in the next few years. Nevertheless, this is still a pretty exciting new discovery, simply because this is a completely new object. First ever Trojan planet. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or the team discovers something else, but at least for now, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.